I worked with Cornerstones for three years in my previous setting because my previous um, head had worked in it in another context as well and I could see the impact it was having on the children but I think it's very easy to think oh actually different context won't have the same impact but actually children are children and if you inspire them and get them to want to learn it doesn't matter what context you are in it meets the needs of the children and I think what's, that's what's key for me with the curriculum and I didn't hesitate at all in introducing Cornerstones to Hockley Heath Academy and in fact I did it before I even started my post in September because I believe in it so much and actually it hasn't let me down, it's done exactly what I wanted it to and more and you can see the impact when you talk to the children in my school, the parents, the staff and my governing body. I'm the Chair of the Curriculum and Standards Committee for the Governing Body uh, and my background is as a senior leadership in a, second, a large secondary school um, and I'm a maths teacher. We pick Cornerstones because it's an exciting and engaging curriculum um, that provides teachers with a lot of material and resources to save them time and put more effort into differentiating their lessons and tailoring things to the specific needs of the students in their classes. It's creative. Uh, makes the curriculum less dry than it could otherwise be, uh, mixes the subjects together so people can see they're not just standalone items, uh, everything relates together and has an application. In addition to that, the assessment uh, aspects of it uh, make life a lot easier for the teachers. As someone who's dealt with data heavily in the past, I can see that the uh, online aspects of that will make tracking progress and putting interventions in place much easier for the staff in school. Um, I think that part of it particularly represents extremely good value for money. The curriculum that we've taught here over the last few years um, has been a little more staid and we wanted something that was a bit more engaging and, and innovative so we were really enthusiastic to kind of get the new projects in um, especially with sort of the wow and engaging starters and everything that had a real impact on our curriculum. So obviously initially it was quite daunting to introduce the new curriculum certainly in a place where a lot of the curriculum has been quite similar for the last few years um, so it was just a case of looking at the resources and training staff um, in terms of you know leadership and moving them forward um, to get involved in the new curriculum and get them on board. The actual units themselves have had a real impact on the children um, and the teachers in terms of they're very motivated, they're very enthused, they're very engaged um, and several of the teachers have actually commented to me on how engaged they are with their teaching now to have a much more creative element to, to what they're teaching in the classrooms. In terms of the pupils, you know, you go around school, they're all really enthusiastic to talk to you about what they're learning about um, and it's just a really nice sort of whole school feel. Um, we've all adopted the same creative curriculum and everybody's always very interested to find out what all of the other children are doing. The corridor displays that we've got going around the classrooms and around the, um, around the corridors, you know, show that real sort of whole school feel, um, certainly for years one up to six. And so now it's something that we'd like to consider actually for getting into the foundation curriculum for nursery and reception as well, because they're so infused about the way that we've all changed our teaching styles, they would like to do something similar. My vice principal and I um, did an information sharing evening based around Cornerstones where we invited um, parents into school, um, talked to them about what the Cornerstones um, curriculum was all about, um, shared some of the learning with them, um, shared the topic um, booklets as well um, and the, again the um, impact of that was really really positive. They felt informed and excited about the new learning that was happening at, at Hockley Heath. The information that was given was presented in such an enthusiastic manner. I think that was possibly my um, most, uh, I suppose it was the most appealing part of it. The staff were so excited about delivering it that I was interested in it myself. And in fact, at times, it, you know, when you get that little goose pimples kind of thing and thinking, oh, that makes you want to teach. I thought, well, if it's exciting for the teachers, it'll be exciting for the children. If they show enthusiasm, the children will meet that enthusiasm and bring that home with them, and I want to meet that as a parent. I think it's that the, the more cohesive link between school, home, parents, community, uh, and it just makes learning more real, I suppose. It's not a textbook, it's not, we look at planets in a book, we 
try and link to the concept that they actually exist. It's, it's real learning, it's active, it's interactive, it's interesting, it's exciting. Parts of the curriculum that weren't being taught in school, we've actually put those into a topic-based homework based all around the cornerstones. And the impact of that has been very, very positive in that the vast majority of parents have commented really, really positively on the change and the fact that they feel really, really involved in what's happening in school and really positive comments as well about the cornerstones topics. Um, I like doing the homework, yeah. I get excited when I do it. And um, I think my mum and dad like it, the, the way how we do our homework now instead of just giving them the homework. And we have to do that, it's really fun. And it's more exciting as well for the new topics. Um, I've got a little boy in year one who was quite um, unengaged with his learning and the curriculum and there was one incident where he was quite poorly and mum phoned up to say he's really poorly and um, he's not going to come into school however he has got up got himself dressed because he's desperate to come in because he knows what's happening in terms of the curriculum this afternoon and he's desperate to come into school the same little boy who never did homework before um, did two pieces of homework in one night because he was that engaged with what was going on. So that was a huge moment for me. You go around and you see 232 children engaged in what they're doing and inspired about the learning that's going on. And I have a very open door policy and um, there was one moment where it was the um, year ones and they were doing a fairy hunt and the year one teacher, who's an outstanding practitioner, had, had done this fairy hunt and they found evidence of fairies. And they came back into school because it was in the garden, all this evidence. And um, they came, stormed into my office and said, Mrs. Gabriel, we've got fairies in the garden. And they showed me the evidence and they were so hooked into what they were doing. The comment that my child made the only a, probably a week or so ago was that, I love all my topics, Mummy, which is exactly as he said it, and he's currently covered three topics. Um, another great project has been the Peasants, Princes and Pestilence uh, project. We've had children um, going home making rats, bringing them in and filling the classroom with them. Um, one boy I can quote as having said, we love that project because we got to do all the grim things. I had children coming in telling me all about the chemical properties of the plague, you know. Um, and then from that, we actually saved London. Uh, the children loved that. Um, we became a biohazard division that explored um, a plague pit that was found in London in an archaeological dig. And the children really got on board with that. And you know, the suspension of disbelief was amazing. They went into this whole character persona of these doctors researching and wanting to um, track down the route that the a potential plague victim had taken home and how that would be affecting other areas um, and the children really engaged with it and their understanding at the end of it was fantastic. Yeah we get to do more interesting things because before we just looked we read something on the board uh, our teachers read something read to us on the board told us what we had to do but now we get to see videos we get to see all gory things like um, oh yeah what was that with Christopher Columbus the video Oh yeah, that was, that yeah. was hot. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I like the pestilence video as well. Yeah, that that was like that, that was like we never done the plague before. Then we just got introduced to this pestilence video, and we're like, okay, this topic's gonna be fun and mad. <laughs> we even got to like have a bull's heart and open it, a real yeah. one, and a sheep's heart. I like the way that we could have fun and chop it open, but actually be learning at the same time. I quite like the new topic, burps, bottoms, and bile. And when we found out, uh, quite a lot of people in our class kept laughing at it. And lots of people were excited. We've learned about the teeth and the mouth where the digestion all starts. And then we've learned about all the other parts. And then uh, we just learned about the digestive system in general. In our classroom, um, some people have made digestive systems, 3D models of them. Uh, which are some of them are working and I quite enjoyed uh, doing that. I heard, I heard this crazy idea that boys don't like writing their ideas down. Uh, that is a rumour spread by girls. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, praise Cornerstones. <laughs>